steam. So what's in your box? Well, first of all, we have some plantain seeds. Now, this is a plant which is probably familiar to most of you. Um, have a look at the leaf there. It's got these parallel veins which make it quite distinctive. You'll find that grown in parks and gardens and even places that are regularly walked on, which is quite handy if you're going out to look for it. You can actually use the leaves um, chopped down in a salad. They're quite tough and fibrous, but that's, that's a good thing when they're chopped down. Um, and also, fiber is quite um, topical for this one because the seeds are actually uh, very similar to the psyllium husk that's sold in whole food shops as a source of uh, soluble and non-soluble fiber. So it's very good for the digestive system. Um, but they're also really tasty. And what you want to do is just drag them off between your thumb and forefinger like that. And if you find some of these when you're out and about, they make a very pleasant wayside nibble. But what we're going to do is make a seed sprinkle with them, with a little bit of, mu bit of mugwort, some ground hogweed seeds, and sea salt. And then we have some Giroles, also known as Chanterelles. Now this is a summer variety of mushroom, it's in the peak of its season just now. Next week we hope to be able to show you where they come from in the highlands of Scotland. Um, it pays not to try and get too fancy with mushrooms of any kind, just a little bit of brief frying with some garlic, salt and thyme, and that's it. And next we have some... Bilberries. So here we are in southwest Wales collecting bilberries. Bilberries are in the um, heather family. Um, the scientific name is Vaccinium myrtillus. And they're closely related to the blueberry that you find in shops, which, which is Vaccinium corymbosum. In the past, um, a lot of bilberries were collected in Britain and sent to the big cities like London. Um, but that is no longer the case, um, probably because um, of grazing animals. Wherever you have grazing animals up in the hills, you have bilberry plants but not the fruit. They tend to like to grow high up. So where we are now is about 325 meters in altitude. And that's where I find that they like to grow. And also um, for the best crop, um, you don't want any trees or shade. So they like to be completely open. Although I think Perhaps in places like Finland, I think they grow well in, in the forests there, but here, nice and open. Um, they are very similar to blueberries, they're very small, um, and they are very squishy and very purple, uh, unlike uh, blueberries. So every time, every time you do anything with bilberries, everything becomes purple. Um, they like to grow in acidic ground, uh, peaty acidic ground like we have here. So many thanks to Leander, our harvester in Wales, who kindly put together that little video short for us. And next we have mugwort once again. And this week this is going to go in a, a wayside sprinkle um, with the plantain seeds and also it's going to go to be a herb with the giroles. And next we have some C. Asta, and as you can see, we have a veritable carpet of the stuff here. Someone's put a lawnmower across here, and it's just made the aster grow back all the more vigorously. We do have the mature plants up here, about to go into flower, but actually, it's these succulent green leaves that we're really interested in. Um, they have a flavor that is slightly salty, uh, the texture's crunchy, they're slightly aromatic, almost fruity even. And really, really quite delicious. I prefer them to pretty much any other green. Um, and you would steam these or briefly stir fry them, no longer than 30 seconds either way. Or you can chop them, put them through a salad, or even put them whole in a sandwich. And then some hogweed seeds. And these are now mature and brown. And we're going to grind these up and use them as a spice. And it's actually one of the recipes that I've derived from... Um, from a Persian source. Um, as I mentioned before, hogweed is known as golpar in Persian cuisine. And we're going to put these in a fava bean puree, fava beans being um, essentially broad beans. And uh, we're also going to put them in a seed sprinkle with the plantain seeds. And last but not least, some wood sorrel. And this is a lemony salad leaf that looks a lot like clover. It grows here in the forest in quite poorly lit conditions where the forest canopy is closed over, it's not letting much light through. 
But funnily enough, there's several other species that are found in the UK. All of them escape from gardens, but they tend to grow in much better lit conditions. Um, what I tend to do with this is take the heart-shaped leaflets off, off the stalk, and use them separately. What it means is that the sorrel doesn't get in a tangle. It's a shame to waste any of this stalk, but if you put the whole leaf in, the leaflet tends to catch on things and it's even, even eating it is a tangle. Whereas when you separate the two, you can use them to much better effect separately. Um, and for example, this week we're gonna do that just to illustrate um, with a couple of the simplest kind of um, lunch style dishes, both involving toast. And on the one we'll put the stalks, the other we'll put the leaflets. Wabot, number, Wabot, number 16.